Welcome to this edition of Dufferin Life. I'm your host, Tina Avery. Thank you so much for joining us today. So it is February. We are celebrating Black History Month. Um, joining me today, we have Alethea O'Hare Stevenson. She is the president of the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association. Alethea, thank you so much for joining me. You are welcome, and thank you for having me to talk about Black History Month. I'm excited. Well, I'm excited as well. I mean, you've been on the show before. We've, yes. we're, you're not a stranger to Dufferin Life, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. And I do appreciate you coming out. Um, and I wanted to just talk, before we dive into things that are happening for Black History Month, maybe talk a little bit more about um, why it's important to you specifically. Wow. So Black History Month on a personal level, it's... It's about recognizing all of our contributions and achievements. You know, we are at a time and place where um, blacks are still fighting for literally their lives, right? We're still fighting for equity. We're still fighting for opportunities. And all you need to do is just simply turn on the news um, and see, you know, the tragedies that are taking place. And so for me, it's an opportunity to focus and showcase our or excellence or achievements and to to highlight some of the challenges and obstacles that and barriers that we still face as a community. And I think that's important and one of the things that I believe in what I really truly try to accomplish with my show is creating awareness for things. Mm -hmm. And yes we've been we've talked about these things before but I think um, what people and maybe you haven't heard us speak about it before um, but it need, it's worth and, and the need to repeat it is, is, is very important and to make more and more people aware. Absolutely. So we're going to stay on the personal level for just a little bit more. Um, so we're going to talk maybe, I'm going to ask you a little bit about who maybe inspires you and why they inspire you. That's easy. I'm going to put my daughter on the spot. <laughs> um, you know, all my children, you know, there's definitely inspiration there. But when I look at my daughter as a young lady growing up um, in predominantly white settings, and she had the courage to overcome obstacles, overcome, you know, some of the barriers that were placed in front of her, um, she's my hero. Right, and I've told her that time and time again. But as a young, you know, as a young, she's a woman now. As a young woman, she would always brush me off and think, "Oh, mom, you're just being a mom." But honestly, she is, you know, the one individual who I look up to because she has the, she's had the courage to persevere and overcome so many challenges in her young life. And at the same time, she's brave enough to step out, step out of her comfort zone and do things differently. Right, as a young person, she had the courage to, to stand up and say, I want to be a ballerina, right? A space that is not very common for black girls. Mm -hmm. And so she did that, she excelled, and she was able to do amazing things on the stage, right? Now she's at um, University in North Bay, and again, in a very different setting, a setting that's not um, predominantly black, and she's thriving. But again, it's the courage for her to be able to step out of her comfort zone and do things that lights her up mm -hmm. and do the things that she believes in and want to make a difference for herself. So when I fast forward that now and talk about you know the impact on me, it makes me want to work harder to make the space that I'm going to leave for her a little bit better. Yeah, and that's very impressive. And, and the, she sounds like a very accomplished young woman. Um, and I think one of the really important things about talking about this is because there's a lot of people out there that maybe don't have that courage. Mm -hmm. They need to hear these stories. They need to learn more about it. They need to feel more confident in who they are in Absolutely. order to excel themselves. So yeah. I would, yeah. it's you know what the seeing is a believing, right? And so if I look at myself as a young girl growing up, there were not many individuals who looked like me who I could identify with. Mm -hmm. And so that's problematic because if you can't see it, how can you you believe it and dream it? Right? There are some individuals who, you know, had that mental fortitude and strength to be able to break barriers mm -hmm. without having role models. But for many of us in our communities, those role models were simply just not there. And, and, and if they were there, and I mean, and there are history books, but I think the thing is you really have to look to find That's black history in a history book. Uh, growing up, we weren't taught a lot about black history. Yes. You know, and as, as things, you know, people become more aware and everything becomes more predominant, like this is, this is, you need to learn about these people. They are black Canadians, they are black yes. Americans, they are black, you know, and, that have done amazing things in this world. Yeah. Um, that, you know, we don't know about, you know, you hear about Rosa Parks, but you don't necessarily hear about Viola Desmond. And, you know, they, like there's so many, but she's on our $10 bill. So exactly. why? And if you don't know why, then you need to 
find that lovely phone or tablet and look up on Google why is she you know and I think that um, and then us telling those stories and us and doing and and not just us I, I say me but because we're talking about it right mm -hmm. now but just people in general telling those stories and making people more aware um, it helps because it was we didn't have it growing up either absolutely and you know you talked about the history books and you know black history is missing mm -hmm. period right and so there are many uh, talented accomplished black Canadians you know right here in our hometown and we haven't celebrated them you know even when I look out step outside and look at the Honorable Jean Augustine you know the first black female uh, member of Parliament and because of her, we're able to celebrate Black History Month, mm -hmm. right? And there's a long list of individuals who paved the way. For example, Rosemary Sadler, who you know paved the way to be able to prepare the package for the Honorable Jean Augustine to be able to present to Parliament. That's history that we will never find in the history books, and it's us, up to us to to narrate it and tell the story so that we're making sure that our young people now have opportunities mm -hmm. to see themselves represented, right? Yeah, and I think that's that's important and that's why you're here and that's why we're here today is to talk about it because if we're not talking about it then it's it's as you said, it's not in the books. We need to make people aware. So let's talk a little bit about how the community itself mm -hmm. can celebrate Black History Month. Oh my gosh, so we have lots of amazing and exciting opportunities coming up. So let's start with the most um, current one. Theatre Orangeville has um, offered to partner with DCCBA and so we're hosting a wine and cheese event on a the 17th okay and so this is to celebrate um, underneath Spring Hill an amazing play that is taking place by um, Mr. Roddick and um, it tells a story about um, a miner that was trapped um, underground for I believe eight days mm -hmm. and um, you know survived and tells a story about him singing so I think it's an amazing opportunity and so I encourage everyone to visit our website um, to to um, gather more information for that. Um, Black History Month for us, DCCBA, we're hosting an amazing event on the 25th of February. Mm -hmm. This is in partnership with the Museum of Dufferin again, um, amazing partner over the past several years. The event will feature our young people. So Streams Community Hub will be participating. Um, the students from Center Dufferin District High School's Black Chapter will be participating. We have um, our keynote speaker, who is um, a historian, a Dr. Natasha Henry Dixon, will be talking about black history and making it relevant and specific to Dufferin County, talking about some of the uh, black Canadians from Dufferin County who have contributed to our history. And of course, we will have musical performances by Richie C., who's a very talented reggae artist, mm -hmm. and of course, our Canadian legend, um, Maestro Fresh West, who will be um, performing. So. All of that will be taking place at uh, Grace Stippling Hall in the town of Shelburne. Amazing. The event is free um, and the event will be hosted by uh, a very passionate and engaging uh, speaker, Alex Ihama, who's the executive director of um, Canadian Congress. And so it's going to be a jam-packed event. And while we're at it, we're also looking at um, in Town Hall, there's a beautiful display actually in Town Hall right now, Shelburne Town Hall, showcasing some of the amazing accomplishments of black Canadians. So again, lots of opportunities to participate, educate and, um, and act. And uh, yeah, I was actually just going to talk about, you know, the community getting involved and where they can learn things. And these types of events are the best place for you to not only just go out and enjoy the community and be a part of the community but to, to learn um, a little bit more um, you know and uh, Google is a lovely thing but because these things are not it's not they haven't been a part of history books they haven't right. been a part so there's you really have to research things like I had never heard of, of Maurice Riddick before yes. Theatre Orangeville decided to bring the show and um, Sharon Aliff was on the show and she told us a little bit about the background and um, and everything but he was just Hearing the story, and if you missed that segment, like hearing the story of Maurice Riddick is inspiring. Like, I just can't tell you, like, it just on the inside, I guess I'm a very emotional human, but, mm -hmm. um, but uh, like, just hearing about how he was the one who kept everybody's morale up and kept everybody positive and did everything he could. Um, but, like, it's just when you walk out of a show like that, you've not only learned a piece of history, a piece of Canadian black yes. history. You are uplifted by just 
everything that he did. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, it's inspiring. So I, if you aren't able to go out on the 17th, uh, that show is running until February 26th. Um, I do encourage you to, to go out and see it. Yes, absolutely. Um, so let's talk a little bit more uh, about the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a few minutes left. Let's talk a little bit about what the vision is, how, if anything's changed since the last time you were here, and what's new and happening there. Uh, the vision has not changed. Um, one of my you know, blue sky goals will be to be able to fund a scholarship, a fully funded scholarship for the entire post-secondary journey of a black youth. Mm -hmm. um, we're not there yet. Um, We've had some amazing sponsors over the past couple of years um, sponsoring our, our scholarship program, and um, a lot of students have been able to benefit from it. So that is one of the things that is uh, our success. And we've also been able to provide mentorship opportunities to a number of students as well. And of course, you know, mentorship is critical, and not just for adults, but you know, even more impactful for our young people mm -hmm. to have experts in a specific field to be able to share their knowledge, their journey with them, and hopefully empower them on their path as well. So with regards to the, um, for the association, mm -hmm. um, how do people get involved? How do they get more information? Our website is um, DufferinCountyCBA.org, and we have amazing opportunities. We have our merchandise store, and that is one way that um, we are able to generate funding. So we have our lovely T-shirts, cups on sale, um, that simply says um, inspire on it, because that's what we aim to inspire, mm -hmm. um, you know, the entire community, not just our black community. Um, and there's also opportunities for individuals to volunteer, and we also accept um, donations. So we don't have charity statuses yet, but we still are able to accept donations. Any amount um, goes a long way to fund our scholarship programs, put on our monthly expert series, um, and even operational expenses. Mm -hmm. right? It's still a business. We still <laughs> need funding to be able to <laughs> operate and put on all the great things that we're doing. Um, so uh, that's another way that um, individuals can get involved. Um, and finally, we have a membership opportunity. right? And so members can uh, benefit from uh, discounts mm -hmm. from various organizations throughout Dufferin County. So lots of opportunity to get involved. Absolutely. And I love the fact that you pointed out that it's not just about the black community because I think we need to be at a point some, I, I foresee it hopefully in our future where um, it's not necessary to point, it just becomes a part of Yep. everyday life like you should know the black Canadian history we should all know what's happening we should all you know we should all be involved in events as a community yes um, and and I, and I just I really appreciate the fact that you wanted you know to say that and I wanted to um, we talked about how important it is mm -hmm. um, creating this awareness and I want to make sure that um, I thank you again and for coming here and sharing all of this and sharing the lovely story about your daughter I would love to meet her sometime you'll have to have her come on my show absolutely <laughs> will do Wonderful. Althea, thank you so much for joining us and um, sharing all this wonderful information. Thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Awesome. And do you go anywhere. We'll be right back.